There's something about this place, and I don't know how to describe it. We've been designated as a major galactic center or showcase. I have a ship and I have a command. If you're with somebody, you're going to get more out of it because it's like an amplifier. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul, embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome, I'm Patrick McNee. Today, we'll discover one group's real-life version of the Star Trek Federation. And we'll put a modern twist on the age-old search for love potions. But first, let's go back to once upon a time, to the age of castles. Through the ages, castles have conjured up a mixture of images from dragons and dungeons to Cinderella and lavish balls. Well, in reality, castles have housed just such a mixture, and today, they still do. Castles scattered around the world, each of them telling their own story of gore or glory. Set on distant hills with their massive stone walls and soaring towers, Castles house myths about ghosts, honor, evil, and magic. It all started in ancient Europe when the Norse and Teutonic tribes invaded the land. These barbarians were fascinated by the ruins of the lost civilizations and made the broken walls their shelters. The idea of castles had begun. Surrounding them, in the dark forests and infested swamps, lurked monsters and demons. Shadows cast in swirling fog made their imaginations run wild. The legends began. Centuries later, when King Henry VIII divorced Catherine in order to be with the beautiful Anne Boleyn, it was the scandal of the century. Their fiery romance lasted only a thousand days. King Henry met the notorious Jane Seymour, and in order to be with her, he ordered Anne Boleyn beheaded. Centuries later, the castle is still said to be haunted by Anne Boleyn's ghost, walking the path to the guillotine. For hundreds of years, kings and queens reigned in their castles until a blaze of fire and rumbling of thunder began a war in Europe. Castles were destroyed, but people held on to the mysteries and magic of castles. Fantasy their only weapon against the grueling circumstances. There is also the darker side of castles. In the haunted corridors and dark dungeons, restless ghosts and demons rule. Dracula is the most famous of them all. In the lonely hills of Transylvania, a morbid castle is his home. As a vampire, he can transform himself into a large bat, crawling along the walls of his castle, prowling for unsuspecting victims. His objective? To drink their blood. His coffin, in the crypt of his castle, guards him against daylight. The sign of the cross and a stake through the heart could end his evil existence. Today, castles are still very much in existence. Although most are not inhabited, standing stark and scary, there are those that still conjure up the magic of fantasy. Far from Europe, in the hills of Hollywood, there is a castle, a magical castle. Entering a room with wall-to-wall -wall bookcases, there is suddenly no way out, but then, whispering open sesame to the gold and blinking owl, will be taken back into another era, another time, where strange things happen, where sacred rooms and passages are closed for a reason. There's something about this place, and I don't know how to describe it, but whatever it is, reaches out throughout the world and pulls in all the people who believe in the unbelievable. 
Every corner and room reveals something strange, luring you to go deeper into the castle. But there are mysterious rooms that nobody can enter, rooms that hold the secret to the wonders of life and magic. This is the absolute inner sanctum for the Academy of Magical Arts. Come with me. To give you some idea of the kind of place we're going, myself as a professional magician, it took me over 22 years before I was actually able to come in this deep into the inner circle. Some of these books, I can tell you, go back to the 15 and 1600s. Um, in fact, this book I know is uh, somewhere around the middle 1500s. It's the, um, the discovery of witchcraft, and it's probably a pretty safe bet you're not going to be finding out what's inside here anytime soon. With the element of castles, anything can happen, and everything is possible. We are only limited to our imagination. After all, a man's home is his castle, and every castle has a king. The United Nations promote peace and unity between the countries of the world. It is only a question of time before the planets of the universe require such a council for galactic matters. Who are we? And what is our role in the universe? Planet Earth is part of a great cosmic drama, and our journey to become part of another galaxy has already begun. Sheldon Nidal and Peggy McConnell have made it their mission to guide us through this journey. They claim to represent planet Earth in the Galactic Federation. The Galactic Federation is a group right now of over, or just about 200,000 star systems and star leagues whose sole process and purpose is to bring light into this galaxy. The Galactic Federation acts as the United Nations for the planets in the Sirius galaxy. Sirius is a star system. It's approximately 8.3 light years from us. A light year is approximately 5.9 trillion miles. Sheldon says that in order for us to become part of the Sirius star system, we have to change. And that is where the Galactic Federation comes in. The Federation is here to help us shift as humans into our full consciousness. What is happening is we have been designated as a major galactic center or showcase for the entire concept of moving our entire galaxy. He claims the Galactic Federation has instructed him to prepare planet Earth for its major journey to another solar system. There is a telepathic link between Sheldon and Sarians. I was briefed by uh, by a whole group of Sirens. There's a Siren computer ship way out in the outer parts of our particular star system, our solar system. So I'm constantly in contact, I'm constantly getting information, I'm constantly being told what's going on, both up there and down over here. The Galactic Federation has a tremendous task in this galaxy. Well, right now, they are controlling the different gates, stargates, which are the interdimensional portals through which all the different groups go. Both Peggy and Sheldon are in contact with the Galactic Federation on a daily basis. He'll get the ship's reports, where I'll get the uh, counseling reports, or I'll get the medical team reports. I have a ship and I have a command. My primary purpose is counseling, and I'm able to communicate with the different civilizations different planets and different processes. Sheldon has been contacted by the Syrians since childhood. I've been afraid to say it to anybody because I thought they would say I was totally crazy. Most of us right now are here for a basic purpose. That purpose is to help this planet shift into its full galactic crystalline consciousness, as I like to call it, and also help all of us as Earth beings, as Earth humans, become fully conscious beings. Reaching full consciousness means major changes in our outlook on life and in our physical bodies. As planet Earth's electrical and magnetic fields collapse, the atoms and the composition of the DNA in our bodies will be modified to form a new body. We will not be living in the third dimensional reality, but in the reality of the galactic light. 
the fundamental physical changes also lie in the composition of our DNA. If we would just open our eyes and see that we are the blessings and we are the gift, that really is going to transform our whole galaxy. Sheldon and Peggy claim that all these changes on Earth are taking place now. Because we are being shifted spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and most importantly, physically as well. Once we have reached our full potential, we will be ready for the final part of the journey. As Earth approaches the photon belt toward the end of the century, it will mark the end of our present civilization as we know it. The photon belt is a huge mass of light and energy. It will be responsible for moving our solar system into a higher dimension, the fifth dimension. Our planet will move to a new position in space closer to the Seria star system. Then we will be in a wholly new set of rela spatial relationships. Once our planet has shifted to the new position in space, we will become part of the Seria star system. The Sirius galaxy is said to be a number of civilizations together, most of them looking like us in physical appearance. Some are smaller, some are bigger, some are almost transparent, some are even more uh, humanoid looking, if that's possible, than we are. They have all different skin colors. They are basically our ancestors. They're also as part of this entire civilization of the Galactic Federation, non-human groups such as uh, amphiboids, you might call them like salamander or frog type peoples, uh, reptoid peoples. Sheldon told me that one Syrian council, Washta, has guided him through his life. Washta is a person I've been very close to since I was a little, little boy. I've seen more and more that the message that he gave me and is continuing to give me is a message of great incredible love and hope for our planet. Sheldon feels that it will be easy to convince people of this incredible change because it has already started. They feel deep in here in their heart that it's true because they feel that experience inside themselves as well. And this whole new reality is our full conscious planet, our full conscious galactic civilization, and the final intermixing and contact with the whole process of our space brothers and sisters and ourselves coming together again. They say that we will play an important role in the Syrian galaxy. Because we're going to be the teachers the next round. And so it's very exciting to see, even in the Bible, it says that the last shall be first. Well, we're the last planet to go conscious in the solar system. But the next round of our solar system will be the teachers to teach these other planets how to use free will, how to be loving, and how to be compassionate. They feel that the most important thing is that we are going back to where we belong. If the Galactic Federation is right, the planets of the entire galaxy will reunite again for the first time in billions and billions of years. The Starship Enterprise has been exploring the universe for hundreds of years. Star Trek has its own united federation for the purpose of bringing aliens from different planets together in harmony. 50,000 enthusiastic Trekkies around the world have created a Star Trek fan club where imagination is the only limit. Galactic expansion, which may soon be a part of our reality, intrigues anyone whose curiosity lies further than the horizons of planet Earth. For centuries, men and women have gone to great extremes to ensnare the one they truly love. What are some of the more modern ways to ensure success? Champagne and caviar, candlelight, exotic oils. <laughs> we shall see. Technically, aphrodisiacs don't exist in this country. Yet through many centuries and in many different cultures, aphrodisiacs have been very much a part of life, just as eating or sleeping. As to whether they'll work, well, that remains to be seen.
Love is a universal language, and finding true love has kept humans busy through all ages. For each person to find the key and fall in love with another is what life is all about. Sometimes love makes us do strange things. We will try nearly anything to catch our true love. In former eras, magicians cast spells or created love potions. One potion to seduce the object of your desire was a mixture of dove's heart, sparrow's liver, swallow's womb, and hare's kidney mixed with your own blood. In practical magic today, we can cast a magic circle following the age-old tradition, which is wise men and magicians made the circle to keep out the darkness and focus inward on light and truth. Drawing the magic circle of love is done according to ritual with all the correct implements. You draw the circle at night under the glow of the moonlight. At each of the four points, north, south, east, and west, place the symbols for the four elements of love. The element of fire is south and represented by a scent burner. For north, the element of earth is represented by seasonal fruit. For east, the element of air is represented by a mirror. And for west, the element of water is represented by a chalice of wine. Place the 22 major arcana cards from a tarot deck around the circle. With four candles at each of the four points, you are ready to begin. Light the candles. When you feel ready, acknowledge the presence of the four elements. After you say the ritual words, sit in the center and focus on the question at hand. Let your mind rest while you wait for an answer from one of the four elements. You can feel the answer with your heart or see it in your mind's eye. When you feel the element has answered you, let your hand be guided to a tarot card. Your reading will help you make the right magical essence or love potion. The love potions are filled with magic and herbs we still know very little about. There's a love potion for almost every kind of love. To find your true love, to heal old wounds, or to open your heart to passion. Making love potions requires certain tools. It is best to use ones made of silver since silver is consecrated by the moon. While some of the potions call for unusual herbs, most use common ingredients like cherry blossoms, dried flowers, and wine. During preparation, you always follow your creation with a special incantation. Whether you say these words silently or aloud, they are important for the magic to work. In the quiet of the moon, with the flowers that there bloom, let me say the true words soon. The potion is now ready. If spellcasting doesn't work for you, there's a magical tea made with a new FDA-approved serum called Eros, the drink of love. At a gathering in Studio City, California, people from all walks of life came to learn about Eros or give a testimonial of its effectiveness. It lasted about six or eight hours for me. Okay, that was... And that was quite good. I don't care if this villain ever leaves. We better go upstairs right now. <laughs> you can't spike a drink with this stuff and make anybody's brain no. say, oh, we'll be. I did feel a sort of tenderness in the breast area and a more sensual feeling. And uh, definitely, uh, if you're with somebody, you're going to get more out of it because it's like an amplifier. The more you put into it, That's the more right. you get out of it. Eros comes in liquid form in a small plastic ampule. You take the ampule, break it over a cup with warm water, and drink it like a tea. You'll feel the effects of the herbal mixture shortly thereafter. So Smilax is a very safe form of testosterone, which absorbed through the, the mucous membranes of the mouth, what they call sublingually, can get into the bloodstream and very naturally and gracefully boost the hormone levels, which then encourages the sexual drive. When you kick into gear your own your own uh, forces uh, in, in an encounter situation, then this herbal-based product will enhance whatever it is that you're going to do or feel. I wonder if people really need such an enhancement. I mean, aren't our natural forces good enough? But we are so distracted in our, in our current times with stress and workload and frustration. And of course, the news is constantly giving us all these terrible events. You get kind of burned out. And this kind of refocuses you back to maybe like you were when you were 18 or 19. And you had no cares and you had no worries. And things were really up and coming.
So anyway, I'm going to give one of these a shot and see what happens here. Well, here goes. To love. Another type of magical device for love is a talisman or lucky charm. Whether we realize it or not, many of us wear or use a talisman, a rosary, or even a favorite charm worn around the neck. The power of the talisman comes from our own emotion. We can make a love necklace in order to empower our lover with sexual energy by wearing gems, crystals, beads, or shells. The wearer will feel inspired with passion and desire for us. As the old saying goes, please don't try this at home. I'm Patrick McNee. Join me next time as we discover more mysteries, magic, and miracles. Something about this place, and I don't know how to describe it. We have been designated as a major galactic center or showcase. I have a ship and I have a command. If you're with somebody, you're going to get more out of it because it's like an amplifier. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul. Potions. But first, Let's go back to once upon a time, to the age of castles. Through the ages, castles have conjured up a mixture of images, from dragons and dungeons to Cinderella and lavish balls. Well, in reality, castles have housed just such a mixture, and today, they still do. Castles scattered around the world, each of them telling their own story of gore or glory. Set on distant hills with their massive stone walls and soaring towers, castles house myths about ghosts, honor, evil, and magic. It also embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome, I'm Patrick McNee. Today, we'll discover one group's real-life version of the Star Trek Federation. And we'll put a modern twist on the age-old search for love. It started in ancient Europe when the Norse and Teutonic tribes invaded the land. These barbarians were fascinated by the ruins of the lost civilizations and made the broken walls their shelters. The idea of castles had begun. Surrounding them in the dark forests and infested swamps lurked monsters and demons. Shadows cast in swirling...